Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar. Um, I think we've got just a couple of minutes before we hit uh, the hour, so I'm just going to give it another minute, possibly two, to make sure that everybody is <clears throat> has joined the webinar before we get started. Okay, well it's just, just gone four o'clock in my local time here, so I think we'll get going. So welcome everybody. My name's Kirsty Meddings and I'm a product manager here at Crossref. Today's session is about our Crossmark service and the practical steps that you need to take if you want to get started and get set up with Crossmark. I will give a brief introduction into what Crossmark is, but not not in any great detail. We have a separate session that I hope many of you have been to um, that gives an overview of the service, but today I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about what you actually need to do to get the Crossmark button and box working on your sites. So, just to um, cover what Crossmark actually is, it's a button that goes on publishers' content and a set of metadata that accompanies that button that tells readers about the publication, publication status of a piece of content. So if something has happened to a piece of content after publication, it's been corrected, it's been updated or even retracted, so on and so forth. Um, one of the main functions of Crossmark is to alert the readers to those changes. But it can also display um, a whole load of other metadata um, to readers. So within the Crossmark box, we can display funding information, author's orchids, a publication history, um, licensing information, and um, much, much more, and I'll show you examples of all of these things as we go through. So just to run through how it works, here we've got um, a PDF article, um, and this publisher has put the Crossmark button into this PDF article. Um, clicking on that brings up the Crossmark box, and this is what most people see most of the time. It's confirmation that the document is up to date, and it gives them a link, a Crossref DOI link, that will point back to the publisher's copy, um, on their website, which is quite handy if they're within the PDF and they're not actually on the website at the time. So no updates to this um, particular piece of content. But hopefully by clicking on it and seeing that um, although this is current, this is a place where updates can be shown in future, that will encourage readers to keep clicking when they see that button. Another example, this is actually on a web page rather than in a PDF, but the Crossmark button is there at the top right. Clicking on this one, we've got the same uh, pop-up box, but in this instance, there is an update. There's been a correction um, for, that was um, published in 2016, and you can follow the link just below that to, full, to, um, to see the correction notice itself um, and find out more about why that correction has been published. And again, I click on the Crossref DOI link to go straight back to um, the original article on the publisher's site. Um, the Crossmark box to change and flag to the reader. And we do have a definition for this. It has to be a, an important change to the work. Um, so we say that 
the changes must be significant enough to affect either the crediting or the interpretation of the work. And within scholarly publishing, there are there is a limited set of events that actually meet this criteria. So we worked with a group of our um, member publishers and actually defined these particular events. So these are the 12 status update types that you can use within Crossmark. Um, these are the ones that we feel fall under that definition of affecting the crediting or interpretation of the work. There are other events that could be considered minor updates, such as publishing a version of record when an accepted manuscript's been available, or perhaps um, additional comments or replies, or even just you know changes for um, correcting typos and so on and so forth. These aren't considered significant enough to trigger a warning to the reader via Crossmark, but there is a space in the Crossmark box for this information to be um, shown as a kind of an FYI for the reader, and we'll see that shortly. So let's look at what you need to do to get set up with Crossmark. Um, anybody can participate in Crossmark. We ask that you deposit uh, good quality and comprehensive metadata so that the Crossmark box is well populated, but you can start out with an absolute bare minimum, which I'll show on the next slide. You need to display the Crossmark button next to the article title on your web pages and your PDFs. And of course, you need to commit to um, sending Crossref metadata for updates for any of your content changes in a timely manner. So let's talk through the steps that you need to take to do this. So the first thing is we are ask is that you create what we call a Crossmark policy page. And this is really quite simple. It's just a page on your own site that explains that you're participating in Crossmark and that you're committed to maintaining the content that you publish. You could also use this page to link to your own policies on corrections and retractions, um, perhaps your guidelines for authors, so on and so forth, information that would be useful um, for the readers. This web page on your site needs to have a DOI assigned so that we can link to it, and then you need to deposit this page um, with Crossref. And if you follow the URL here, um, we will be sending the slides around, of course. Um, that explains to you how to go about depositing the web page so that it has a DOI and can be persistently linked. The minimum that I mentioned that you can deposit for Crossmark um, is these three pieces of metadata. So the DOI of the content to which you're going to be adding the Crossmark button, the DOI of that policy page that you've already deposited, and if you are depositing something that is a retraction notice or a correction notice or a notice of an update, you also need to include the DOI that it is correcting. So Crossmark works backwards if you like. An article's published, it gets its own DOI. X amount of time later, a correction notice is published that gets its own DOI, and when you deposit that correction notice to Crossref, you need to make sure you're including the DOI of the original article so that we can make that link, that there's been an update to this piece of content. Then we ask that you add the DOI um, to your HTML metadata and embed it in your PDFs. Um, for HTML, you may be doing, many of you may be doing this already, you just add this simple line here to point out the DC identifier um, and the DOI of the content. Um, you also need to embed it in the PDF, and this is important because the Crossmark button and box, the kind of widget, if you like, when someone clicks on it, it looks for a DOI so that it knows what to look up in the Crossref database. Um, so it needs to find that reference in the page or in the PDF. Then you need to add the button itself to your content. For web pages, you do this using a snippet of code that we've written. Um, I think I've got that on the following slide. Ideally, we ask that you put the button as close as possible to the article title um, so that it's fairly consistent from journal to journal and publisher to publisher. And also add it into your PDFs. The button comes in a range of sizes and colors. Um, not colors, it comes in color or grayscale, excuse me. If you're going to go um, for current content, we do ask that you make sure the button is in PDF and on HTML pages. If you're going to go through your back file and add Crossmark, um, it's perfectly acceptable just to do that to, um, to your HTML pages. Obviously, we don't expect you to regenerate a back file full of PDF content. But for current content, do be sure that you put the Crossmark button into your PDFs because really that's one of the very strong use cases is that a reader has downloaded the content, has it somewhere locally on their machine, and if they open it up later, they won't know if there have been any updates. Um, and the Crossmark button is quite critical. This is the very simple piece of code that you need to add into your web pages. Um, you can get that from our website at the URL here. And as I mentioned, there are a variety of different types of button to suit um, the style of your own website. Um, 
you choose which one you want to use by adjusting the source source of the script um, and all of the instructions are best um, viewed on this page but you can also change the size of them obviously if you want to make them smaller or bigger it's very flexible and then a final step is to make sure that you're depositing as much additional metadata as you can um, so any of these types of content which are all things that you can add as part of your regular deposits to Crossref um, the key thing with all of these is if you send them to us when you're registering your content we'll display them in the Crossmark box so it really much starts to make that box a really useful resource um, for your readers so to show you how some of that looks we pull author names from the main metadata for a piece of content um, if you are depositing ORCID IDs for your authors, we will drop in that uh, ORCID ID and make it into a link to their ORCID profile on the ORCID site, so that's really handy to follow up on information about the authors. If you're depositing funding data to Crossref, again, we'll automatically pull that out of your metadata and put it into the Crossmark box. If you haven't started Crossmark yet, but you are already depositing ORCIDs and um, funding information and indeed licensing information, you don't actually need to do anything different. Crossmark will just automatically go and look for that information. But if you're not depositing it, then these sections won't show. So obviously, it's less um, of less. It's not quite as rich for the reader, if you like. Um, and licensing information. This only particularly relevant if you're publishing in the medical sciences, but we are also now collecting as part of Crossref metadata clinical trial numbers, um, which we're then using to um, pull together different pieces of content that reference the same clinical trial. So this is an example from a medical publisher. Um, and this particular article is talking about this trial that's registered at clinicaltrials.com. Gov, and because we've had that trial number deposited from other medical publishers, we're able to link together the different articles that talk about that same trial. So a little bit niche in terms of it being in, in one very specific subject area, but if you do publish in, um, in medicine and you're interested in getting involved in this, it's still quite early days, it's just come out of pilot, um, do drop us a line because we'd love to talk to you about getting more publishers involved in this. And this is the more information section of the Crossmark box. So this comes, sits down at the bottom below those sections for funding data and licensing information and so on. And this is basically um, open for you to put whatever you want um, in terms of information. So it's a, a free text field. Um, each journal, each publication, each um, publisher can decide what they want to put in there. In this example, this is a nice example because they've put quite a lot of information in there. They've put the um, publication history, some information about how it was peer reviewed, um, and a link to some supplementary materials. You don't have to put anything in the more information box, but whatever you do want to put in, it's incredibly flexible. Um, you can arrange it as you like, put, choose your own title headings for the different sections, and put links in there. So it's a really nice flexible space for you to put some of that metadata that doesn't quite have its own um, home in the schema yet. There are some additional fees for Crossmark. It's 20 cents per deposit for current content and 2 cents per deposit for back file, which is anything, current content is anything published in um, the past two years and back files before that. If you are already running Crossmark on your content, um, do check that you have upgraded to our latest version. We launched version 2.0, um, I think it was around about the spring last year, um, and it was quite a significant upgrade to Crossmark. Uh, we redesigned the buttons so that they're, they look more like buttons that readers will click on. Our previous button was very flat looking and we felt we found that people were missing it as a, as a link. Um, particularly important, uh, Crossmark 2.0 is um, responsive. It looks really nice on phones and tablets, whereas earlier versions of Crossmark have not done so. The code is much more friendly to being embedded in your websites. Um, and critically, we are no longer supporting 1.5, which was the previous version, because version 2.0 has been out for about 18 months now. Um, so if you run into problems with 1.5, our advice will be please upgrade to 2.0. And again, if you already have Crossmark, you just need to replace the Crossmark code in your landing pages with the 2.0 and then choose from those different buttons that I showed earlier. These are the latest numbers from just a couple of weeks ago. There are 5.4 million DOIs that have got, or content items that have Crossmark 
uh, metadata and cross mark buttons, and those are spread across 490 of our publishers. Um, of those 5.4 million um, cross mark enabled pieces of content, 57,000 contain some kind of status update. Um, close to 2,000 now we have as traction notice. The bulk, as you might expect, are corrections, 51,000 corrections at present. And then again, off those 5.4 million content items, 3.1 of them, 3.1 million of them, excuse me, have some of that additional metadata. So that box that I showed you at the end where you can put in um, useful information for your readers. So gosh, coming in rather well ahead of time, that brings me to the end of the overview of the steps you need to take. Um, we will be, we've recorded the session and we'll be circulating both the recording and the slides, so all of those URLs that you've seen, um, don't worry about remembering them or jotting them down, but that's where you'll find all of the detailed information on our website and our support pages about how to, how to go about getting started and getting CrossMark working on your publications. I should have said at the beginning, but everyone has been muted for the duration of the webinar just to avoid um, sound interference, but if you want to um, ask questions, we do have 10 minutes or so, um, where I'm very happy to take questions. If you pop them into the questions box in the GoToWebinar control panel, um, and I'll give everyone a, a minute or two to, to type if there's anything you'd like to ask. If, of course, if anything comes to you after today's session, that's my contact details on the screen there. Um, feel very free to drop me an email, and I'd be happy to help with any questions. I'm not seeing, not seeing any questions yet. The other option, which sometimes works, if you want to virtually raise your hand, I could unmute you if you'd rather ask a question um, without having to type it out. A question that's come in, is there a separate webinar on setting up DOIs? There is. Um, we run a, a series of webinars um, for all kinds of different topics. Um, Best thing is to check on the website. Um, I'm sure they're all listed there and they're all repeated fairly regularly. So do have a look there. Okay, trying to find the balance between making sure I've given time for people to type and not um, keeping you online for any longer than I need to. Um, but I don't think anyone else is typing anything. As I said, please drop me a line if you think of anything after today's session. Um, but otherwise, I will just say thank you very much for your time.